Our first step for working with radicals is simplification. Here, if I want to add, subtract, multiply, or divide with radicals, we need to be able to put our expressions in a form that's most convenient for doing so. Now, let's recall our definition. So we have b, okay, which we're calling the principal square root of a. So I denote this as b equal to radical sine of a. This just means b is greater than or equal to zero, and b squared is equal to a. So the idea here, if I want the square root of a, try to find a b such that when I square it, we get a back. Now, for some examples, we take the square root of zero, that's equal to zero. That just means if I take zero squared, I get zero back. Square root of nine is equal to three. Here, we take three squared, we get nine, and this is greater than or equal to zero. For the square root of three, okay, this number we're not gonna be able to write down. Okay, it goes on forever without a repeating pattern. What starts out is 1.732. If we take 1.7 and square it, we get 2.89, which is very close to three. So this is believable. Note, if we try to take the square root of a negative number, we call that undefined. So there will be no real square roots for negative numbers. Now, if we want to manipulate expressions with radicals in them, okay, we need rules for simplification. So we want to do these rules before we try to do any operations like addition or subtraction. First rule, we want no exponents under the radical sign, and that'll be the focus of this part. We also want no fractions under the radical sign, and we want no radicals in our denominators. Now, for the first part, the key tool that I need is gonna be the multiplication rule. So if we have x and y greater than or equal to zero, the rule says square root of x times y is just equal to square root of x times the square root of y. So if I want to work with expressions under a radical, I'm allowed to break it up into several radicals as a product. Now, to show this, okay, it's just a language trick. I want to give names to each part in our expression here, in the equality. So I'm going to call square root of x equal to a, square root of y equal to b, square root of x times y equal to c. So these are all greater than or equal to zero. If we use our language trick, this is the same as saying x equals a squared, y equals b squared, x times y equals c squared. Now you'll note, if I take a times b and square it, that's the same as a b times a b, which is equal to a squared times b squared. Now you'll note, a squared times b squared is the same as x times y, same as c squared, but if I have a b quantity squared equal to x times y, that's the same as saying square root of x times y is equal to a times b. Okay, note here, a times b is positive, or zero. So, if I replace what we have for a and b, that's square root of x and square root of y, and then you note what comes out is just the equality that we're looking for. So, nothing to really think about here, it's a lot of symbol pushing. For a simple example, let's consider square root of 36. Now, by the definition, this is equal to 6, because 6 squared equals 36. If I use the multiplication rule, we can factor 36 is 4 times 9. We apply the rule to get square root of 4 times square root of 9. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. We multiply, we get 6. So, that verifies what we get with the definition. Now, the way we use this, when we simplify, what we want to do is pull the largest square that we can out of the number under the radical. So for instance, if I do square root of 200, I could factor this as 2 times 100. So we have square root of 2 times square root of 100. Square root of 100 is 10. We get 10 square root of 2. I know that this is simplified because I have only a 2 under the radical. There are no exponents. So that can't be pushed any further. How are you sure in general? Well, what you need to do is factor what's under the radical completely into powers of primes. So for instance, if we took square root of 200, that's equal to eight times 25, which is the same as two cubed times five squared. So here, I could simplify further. Now, what we need to know is, what's the rule for getting rid of the exponents? So what we have here, okay, we'll show it on the next board, 
if I have an even exponent, we just cut it in half. So square root of a to the two n is just a to the n. If I have an odd exponent, okay, a to the two n plus one, I push a square root of a to the side, and then we take half of what's left over. So square root of a to the two n plus one is a to the n times square root of a. Now, if we apply this to square root of 200, okay, what do we have here? I have two cubed times five squared. I can split that up. What do our rules say? For the two cubed, what do we do? We're gonna set aside a square root of two, and then we'll take half of what's left over. So half of two is one. So I have a two to the one. For the five squared, that's even. We just cut the exponent in half, giving me a five to the one. So you'll note, what do we have? We have a two times five, which is 10, and then a square root of two with no exponent. So we get 10 square root of two, which agrees with what we had before. Before we show the exponent rules, we start with two warm-ups. So these rules are very useful in general. If I have a greater than or equal to zero, square root of a times square root of a is equal to a, and we have that the square root of a squared is also equal to a. So I should think of these as saying that square root and squaring cancel each other out in either order. Now, see the first rule, just recall, we have b equal to square root of a. It's the same as saying b squared equals a. Now, b squared is also equal to b times b. So if I just substitute square root of a in, okay, radical a, then I just have the a is equal to radical a times radical a, and that's my first rule. For the second rule, we just apply rule one. So if I have square root of a squared, okay, a squared is just a times a. I could break this up as square root of a times square root of a. Then we just saw that this is equal to a itself. So that gives me rule two. Now, for our exponent rules, okay, the first one says if I take square root of a to the two n, I just get back a to the n. So I half the exponent. So what do we need to show here? Well, I would have to show if I take a to the n times a to the n, we get back what's under the radical sign. So a to the n times a to the n, we add the exponents, I get a to the two n. That agrees with what's under the radical. So that shows the first rule. For the second rule, same idea. I have radical of a to the two n plus one. I claim that that's equal to a to the n times radical a. So I'm gonna take a to the n radical a, multiply it by itself. So the a to the n's combined to give me a to the two n. Okay, we add the exponents. Radical a times radical a is just equal to a, okay, by rule one. So I have a to the two n times a, which is a to the one. So that's gonna give me an exponent two n plus one. So this agrees with what we have under our radical. So that means this is our square root. Now, let's look at more examples. If I take square root of 108, if I factor into primes, I'll have two squared times three cubed. So the four, square root of four is equal to two, so I pull that out. I have three cubed. So remove a square root of three off to the side and then cut the exponent in half. So that'll give me just a three. So I get six square root of three. Now to check my work, okay, I just take this expression, multiply it by itself. What do we get? Six times six is 36. Square root of three times square root of three is three. I get 108. That agrees with what's under the radical, so that checks my work. If I try something like 72 over six, now for an expression like this, when I have a fraction, if I can simplify inside the radical, I like to do that first. Now, here, 72 divided by six is gonna become 12, so we're just looking at square root of 12. Now, that's equal to four times three, or two squared times three, so I can pull out the two to get two radical three. Now, if I wanna check, I can at least check that this squared goes to the square root of 12, so let's take a look. 2 radical 3 times 2 radical 3. Okay, I get a 4 from the 2s. Radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. 4 times 3 is 12, and that agrees with what I have under the radical here. So that checks us up to this point. We could also work with variables. So if I try something like square root of 36 xy the fifth, our multiplication rule says I could break it up to deal with each piece. So I have square root of 36 times square root of x times square root of y to the fifth power. 
square root of 36 is equal to 6. The square root of x, okay, the exponent there is 1, so I can't work with it, so we just get a square root of x. Square root of y to the fifth power, so that's an odd exponent, so I'm going to move off a square root of y, and then I'm going to take y to the fourth, cut the exponent in half. So we get a y squared. So here I get y squared square root of y. Now, the way we usually write our radicals, okay, we move everything without square root to the front, push everything with the radical to the back under a single radical sign. So what I'll have here, we'll have 6y squared times the square root of x times y. Now, if I want to check, we take that expression, multiply it by itself, see that we get what's under the radical. So if I do that, what happens? I have a 36, I have a y to the fourth power, we add exponents, square root of xy times square root of xy, what's under the radical matches, so we just remove the radical. So I get xy. Now, we have 36, I have x, I have y to the fourth times y, which becomes y to the fifth. So this agrees with what we have under the radical, and that checks our work. A few more examples with quotients. So let's try square root of 8y to the seventh over y to the fourth. Now we only have the multiplication rule, so we're hoping that if we simplify what's under the radical, we'll be able to work with it. We have y to the seventh over y to the fourth. Exponent rule says we take the difference, so that becomes y cubed. We have 2 cubed times y cubed. These are odd exponents, so we apply the odd exponent rule for radicals. That gives me 2 radical 2 times y radical y, and if we clean that up, we get 2y times radical 2y. Now you might be wondering, is there a rule for quotients that works like the multiplicative rule? And then the answer is yes. So if we have x and y greater than zero, square root of x over y is equal to square root of x over square root of y. Now, draw back here, the square root of y, okay, that can wind up violating one of our three rules for simplification. But we'll learn how to deal with that later. Now, see this? Okay, just like with the multiplication rule, it's just symbol pushing. So if I call a equal to radical x, call b radical y, then this is the same as saying a squared equals x, b squared equals y. If I take a over b squared, that's equal to a squared over b squared, and then that's equal to x over y. Now, rearranging the language, this is the same as saying that the square root of x over y equals a over b, then we just substitute back in square root of x, square root of y, and that gives us a rule. Now, for another example, let's try square root of 20y squared over y to 8. We'll do it in two different ways. If we use the division rule first, so I'm going to break this up into square root of 20y squared over square root of y to 8, okay, then I go to work on each of these separately. In the denominator, okay, I cut the 8 in half to get y to the 4th. For the numerator, square root of 20 is going to be, okay, 4 times 5, so we'll have 2 square root of 5. Then square root of y squared is just y. Now, for the y over y the fourth, okay, we're going to subtract 1 off of the 4 to get a y cubed, and then we have our answer. 2 radical 5 over a y cubed. The way I would like to do it, okay, I prefer simplifying first. So if we divide y squared by y the eighth, I move the 2 down here, we subtract, so I get y to the 6th power. Now, we can apply our division rule to this, and I have square root of 20 over square root of y to the 6th. This square root in the denominator, cut the exponent in half, I get y cubed. And then the numerator, we have square root of 20, okay, 4 times 5, so I have 2 square root of 5. Then we note these match up, so we'll have options for how we proceed when we do our work. 